<laughs> so for those of you that don't know, so Doug has what in his setup? I love that, Doug. That I 24 love near field. I believe he's got 24 inch near field, 24, 24 of them. Hawthorns, yeah. and then he's got up here upstairs, he's Gallahorns Correct. and mounted in, in the, the ceiling. ceiling. In the, in the ceiling. ceiling. Um yeah, and Doug crazy. runs probably like 30 dB hot. Yeah. Probably more than that. <laughs> in his living room, hot. when he turned the Gallahorns, it felt like the living room was breathing. Yeah. Like it felt like the floor was heaving and coming up and down yeah. with the pressure and dissipation. Like it was a vacuum. It was just getting right. sucked in and then pushed out and then sucked in and then pushed out. It's like and, you're standing on a boat dock in his yes, living room. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it was, but, it, but he's just sitting there with this huge grin on his face. So let's talk about big subwoofers because literally over the past, I don't know what, the past at least five, six, seven, eight years, maybe even longer, we began to see more and more manufacturers in the home theater space, particularly move up to 18s. And then not too long after that, we saw some 21s. They were like, 21? What the heck? And then they're making 24s. And, and I've seen some what as large as 80 inches. Ascendo mm -hmm. makes this big, massive 80 inch. So that's pretty crazy. We saw, I think, a 50-inch at um, Cedia from Ascendo. The comment that I hear sometimes is, man, I've got a 12-inch subwoofer and it rattles my dishes. Why would I need anything more? So what are some reasons? Why did you choose maybe in your home? Well, first, at least tell us what you have in your theater room because we're all rocking at least 18s. Um, and, and then kind of talk about like, why did you, why did you get to that point? Why are you at that level of those size and that quantity. Yeah, like like I said, starting off smaller subs, I had had the 10 inch for a while and then moved up to 12 for a little bit. And then I did the uh, the Dayton Ultimax 15 inch and did that DIY for a while. Um, and then after that, I was actually building out a room in Kentucky in our house. And I was planning on going with 418s and we actually sold that place before we ever um, got to that point. And it just, kind of kept going deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole and so got looking at funny 24s. how that happens yeah you start uh, you start reading things on the forums and you're like man i wonder if i'm missing out you know yeah <laughs> so start at like, like an eight inch and then you're like oh well what if i go to a 12 and then what if i go to a 15 and yeah. what if i yeah. go to an 18 and then before you know it you're at an 80 inch subwoofer and you're like i, yeah. I don't even know how i got here with second yep. mortgage yep and your electric bill is you know through the roof because you're playing it all the time um no so yeah i went from a a 15 inch ultimax to three hs 24s from nick mm -hmm. so I, I made a pretty big jump there and so three 24 inch subwoofers like let that sit in those are <laughs> massive man and you've got some videos on your channel on those absolutely yeah the whole build process the just kind of the mm -hmm. unboxing going over the sub itself and then i built um i built some boxes which i'll try to figure out how to pull up some pictures here at some point in the uh, in the chat or on the, the stream here, but um, had two of them up front and the boxes held up my center channel. And then I had my towers on either side of those. So I had two of the 24s up on the front wall, another 24 kind of behind us off in the corner, it wasn't near field, but it was back there. And really I would have probably bought four, but mm -hmm. three was all I could realistically fit in that room. So, cause I bought a, a, a giant four channel lamp the symbols slacker yeah i know <laughs> i could have made it happen but realistically it would have been a little difficult but um yeah so had those rocking in our last place i've currently uh we've moved since i built all that stuff and had it set up on our last house i've got two of them running right now as near field mm -hmm. so like literally two of them are sitting right behind my seat right here one's just off to the left one's off to the right and the the low end, the impact that you get from those larger drivers mm -hmm. is like nothing else you're going to feel with a couple 12s or a couple 15s. I mean, you start getting into multiple 18s like like Jonathan has, and I mean, his system rocks. I mean, that that shakes your eyeballs. So he's he's got a legit system, and and once you start getting up into multiple 18s and the 24s, that's where you start feeling this this impact and that ultra low base that you just can't produce because you're not moving that air with 15s and 12s nice all so, right jonathan what do you have yeah i mean i think the answer is that it's about the displacement and mm -hmm. you get those big drivers that big diameter there's a lot more displacement that can happen with lower levels of excursion and also mm -hmm. your distortions kept lower <clears throat> and if you add multiples that just kind of magnifies it so 
Yeah, I mean, there is something to it. I mean, we've all started, a lot of us sounds like in the chat, we started with tens or less, and then you mm -hmm. kind of work your way up. You go and you experience other systems, and you realize, man, wait a minute, <laughs> I can't do that. There's another so, world out there. Yeah. yeah, you climb the ladder. I mean, even I had a couple, and I've told you guys about this on the podcast before, I had a couple Infinity uh, HPS 1000, which were fantastic subs from Infinity. They had yeah. uh, 15 down firing and two passive radiators on the side, and I had two of them. And in our rental house at the time, in a college rental house, there was a pool that was attached to the back of the yard. And I'm not kidding, that mm -hmm. those Infinity HPS could ripple the water in the pool. But they didn't dig as deep as some of the stuff we have today. Yeah. So I'll tell you something that kind of made my uh, interest in this hobby really deep. I mean, I already had a pretty nice system at that point, but in 2011 timeframe, mm -hmm. went over and visited a local guy on the forums because he was talking about how he loved his HSU so much. And that was eye-opening for me because those things were in a 15 yeah. horse a 15 hertz tune and he played that incredible hulk the 2008 incredible hulk and when the hulk is just stomping around and everything and you get that 15 hertz it was in a small home theater room it was guttural it yeah. was like it was so impressive that i was like i was calling all my buddies on the way home on the drive home be like you gotta go over here and feel this is amazing i never felt anything like it mm -hmm. so that kind of opened up the door and then over the course of the last 10 years since then you know, i experienced all these different systems with the really low frequency stuff that just yeah. it it's the stuff that makes you have an ear to ear grin that you can't you just can't stop smiling yeah um and it's it's that displacement and it's the quantity okay so i went from a james loudspeaker 10 at that point to two rel dual 12s mm -hmm. and then i made the mistake of going to jonathan's house <laughs> <laughs> and realizing that was part that, of mine too. Realizing <laughs> that, that, my uh, that was Jonathan. That my like, rel twelves okay. didn't do what his did, and then he was and like, "And that oh, they cost a whole lot yeah, of money." Yeah, but then he goes, out. "Oh, you should buy these." <laughs> and me, being the naive young man that I was at the time, goes, "Oh, okay." <laughs> and I didn't tell my wife. So. <laughs> All this is a sudden, recurring theme on this it podcast. Is, it's a reoccurring thing, <laughs> theme with me. <laughs> yes. um, and then all of a sudden, two JTR 4000s show up that are the size of small refrigerators. So I now have two 4000 ULFs and then four effectively RS1s and then a custom cabinet RS1 as a near field. Nine 18 inch drivers in the theater. You're not lacking. No. So, so why did why did you get to that point though? Like, what are what are you searching for that you didn't get with smaller sub? I, th I think something's lesser. wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> your inner issue. ear is off, and you just can't hear well. <clears throat> yeah. Well, at the last get together, Jonathan looked at me and just went, "You're like Doug." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, for those of you that don't know, so Doug has what in his setup? I love that, Doug. That I love Doug. near field. I believe Doug's he has got twenty-four inch near field, twenty-four odd horns, and then he's got up here, upstairs, he's gallowhorns, correct, and mounted in, in the, the ceiling. ceiling. In the in ceiling. ceiling. Um, yeah, and Doug crazy. runs probably like thirty dB hot, yeah. probably more than that. In it's his pretty, living pretty room, wild. when he turned the gallow horns, it felt like the living room was breathing. Yeah. Like it felt like the floor was heaving and coming up and down yep. with the pressure and dissipation. Like it was a vacuum. It was just getting right. sucked in and then pushed out, and then sucked in and then pushed out. It's like and, you're standing on a boat dock in his yes, living room. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> it was. But, it, but he's just sitting there with this huge grin on his face. Oh, so yeah. I, I run. I don't know. I run my subs pretty hot. I mean, I'm at like 15 yeah. to 20 dB, probably. Um, Jonathan can attest to that. He's seen the measurements. <laughs> A little yeah. higher. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, maybe. But um, I just really like the, the low frequency. And the more subs, I mean, <clears throat> when you start putting subs around the room, you're getting better frequency response mm -hmm. without the need for huge amounts of EQ. Like each one of my subs only has three to four filters on it. And my yeah. frequency response is butter smooth. Yeah. So I don't more subs, less EQ, yeah. better frequency response and an all around better experience because, you yeah. know, what's home theater without the brown note? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So to me, subwoofers are that's where a lot of the excitement comes because you can get clarity and you can get detail. You can get good dialogue from your center channel. And that's all great. And it's everything. an over majorly overlooked part of home theater and music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, to me, the excitement comes when you are feeling King Kong in your living room, when you're feeling 
that explosion, you know, when you weren't expecting it and it just all of a sudden it's impacting you physically and it's moving your pants legs or your chest or whatever. And so I started off with a 10 inch and then later on I bought a used Velodyne 15 inch. It was a F1500, 15 inch, 250 watt amp. Then I upgraded to Velodyne HGS 15s, which had a 20, like 2250 continuous amplifier, I think 5,000 peak, another 15 inch, had a nicer finish, piano black, uh, gloss finish. Like that so much. That was when we moved here into this house. I upgraded and bought a second one. So I had dual of those. Then I found a great deal, youth man deal on a Klipsch RSW 15 that had a 15 inch active in the rear and a 15 inch passive in the front. So I bought one, bought another, bought a third, bought a fourth. So I had four of those in between Clips La Scala's. Rocked that for probably like seven years. And it wasn't until um, everybody just kept, oh, I'm sorry. So the next step was I reviewed some uh, PB-16s. There was other subwoofers in there that I reviewed, but, but I reviewed the PB-16s and I'm like, holy cow, these two PB-16s that just have dual, technically dual 15s in them, um, outperform my four Klipsch subwoofers. They dig a little bit deeper and have just as much output and there's less of them. And so I ended up selling those, bought the PB 16s, rocked those for a while. And then I made the mistake of, um, everybody just kept selling, telling me, man, if you like SVS, you've got to check out JTR. And I'm like, who's JTR? Never heard of them. And so I looked up the company, reached out to Jeff, didn't hear from him, emailed him, messaged him, Instagram, I mean, like every platform possible, I reached out to him, didn't ever hear from him. And finally, he made a, a post on the Facebook, one of the Facebook groups. And he says, hey, we're bringing this to Axpona, or maybe they had just finished up at Axpona. And he had this massive system. And I just commented, I said, hey, Jeff, those look awesome. I'd love to review them someday if you're interested. And he said, absolutely, reach out to me. So he sent me the uh, RS2s. Dual 18s, 4,000 watt continuous amplifier in each one. And I removed my PB16s, put those in there. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Like you said, it was the beginning of the end for Michael. It, it literally was. It was yeah. transformative. I'm like, this is a whole new level because after using mini DSP, we were able to, and Tony, if he's in the chat, SOWK. He helped me dial it in remotely because he's way better at, at that than I am. And he was able to get my subs flat down to five hertz in my room. And we're talking flats. I mean, we've got significant output at five hertz. And I just never experienced that. I couldn't go with ported because the 4000 ULF is just too deep for my cabinet uh, to go behind my screen. And They're but, quite large. But holy cow. Um, it was like I said, it was just it was a, it's a different experience. And so those of you, if you haven't experienced it's a moist the, experience. <laughs> here we go. Here. <laughs> so if you have not experienced big subwoofers, we're talking 18s, 21s, 24s, and you're you're like, man, I, I want to see what this is all about. Those of you that have VIP gold, VIP platinum, you're gonna get that opportunity because we're taking you to four home theater tours in Kansas City that have some pretty incredible home theater subwoofer setups. But we're also going to have several demo rooms available for you to experience firsthand. And one of those, like I said, is Stereo Integrity, and they're in the chat right now. So Nick's got some really awesome subwoofers. And so Kyle, maybe kind of let's kind of lead into what are some of the things and, and some of the subwoofers? Because I know you've been in communication with a couple of these mm -hmm. brands and you're going to be reviewing some of their bigger subwoofers on your channel and maybe share with us a little bit about what you're going to be bringing, you know, kind of on their behalf, but they're also going to be at the show as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, and kind of to piggyback off what you were saying, like I, I've talked to a lot of people whenever they've asked me about theater mm -hmm. systems and kind of putting stuff together and uh, you know, friends locally and things like that. And I tell them all the time, I'm like, you got to go big on your subs because mm -hmm. that's, I mean, you go to a movie theater and you have the whole experience and you go home with a sound bar and it's like, yeah, you can, you can play things loud. Or even if you have a nice surround sound system, you can play it loud. But if you don't have that bass and that rumble, 
Right. It's not as immersive. Mm -hmm. You're not going to, you're just not going to get the same effect as you are in a movie theater. So I always tell them have a healthy, healthy budget for your subs yeah. and try to go as big as you can, because yeah. that's, even if you have just mediocre speakers, you're going to get a much better experience if you have some big subs and some big sound from the low end.